Ken, Salt Lake City, you, no, 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 let me go to Ann, New Jersey, the great WABC. We'll get to Ken in a moment. Go. Hi, Mark. How are you? All right. How are you? Good. I'm calling regarding the health care issue. I'm frontline. I work in the emergency department in a fairly underserved area. Um, your point about the guy who couldn't afford the $20 for his prescription, my question is, is I wonder if he smoked cigarettes, if he had an iPhone, if he's got cable TV at home. Um, I mean, the, the abuse of the Medicaid system is unbelievable. These, these people come in and actually ask me to write prescriptions for things like Motrin and Tylenol and Benadryl because their, their insurance card, their Medicaid card will cover the cost of it. All right, let's slow down. So Motrin's what, five bucks a pack? If that, at Costco, you could probably get 300 tablets for three three bucks. <laughs> three bucks. It's over the counter, but they yeah. want a prescription so somebody else covers it. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But yet, they're answering their, their cell phones, their iPhones, their kids are playing on their little handheld Well, well But, Ann, this is, this is what annoys me. What annoys me is people say, but people with pre-existing conditions should get, okay, here's what I want to know. I'm supposed to take care of them if they lose their house. I'm supposed to take care of somebody if they lose their job. I'm supposed to take care of somebody if they don't buy insurance. Um, I mean, um, where does this end? It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. And, it, and then to hear that we refuse people treatment because they don't have insurance, that's what's infuriating, mm -hmm. that, that we will not provide health care because you don't have insurance. I, the majority of my patients, I couldn't even tell you if they're insured or uninsured. If you walk through the door, you get treatment. You get the same treatment whether you have insurance or you don't have insurance. All right, let's slow down. So you work in an emergency room. Uh, yeah. People are covered no matter what. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, the major drug, com drug companies all spend hundreds of millions of dollars on the care for people who can demonstrate that they can't afford expensive prescription drugs. I don't even know if the American people know that. No, probably In the probably aggregate, not. these companies spend over a billion dollars. Oh, I read somewhere three billion dollars, whatever the figure is, dispensing drugs for free. Yes. There's, there are tons of programs. So this guy who couldn't afford the $20 prescription. It's a lie. It's, yes. There, there are tons of programs out there that will, that will provide prescriptions. And not only that, but places like Target and Walmart, a majority of generic prescriptions you can get for $4. You can get a month's supply for $4. Do you know what I pay for Lipitor now a month that I have to take? $4. Right. Yep. Now, so they're not, they're losing money. Yes. On on selling me Lipitor, thirty tablets for four bucks. Yes. And by the way, it's not because of me; it's for anybody. Right. Exactly. You don't you don't need to show any insurance information. Nothing. All you need is a prescription. You can go in. You can get a ninety day supply for nine dollars. It's ju it's just stunning to me. We have all these programs in place through the private sector. Mm -hmm. Through uh, through pharmaceutical companies, through hospitals, through doctors, through all the and it's and we still get the sob stories as if this is 1920. Yes. Yep. I can't afford. I can. And you're perfectly right in making your point. I'm going to show you. You listen. Keep listening to the program, okay, Ann? Okay. I'm going to show you the next call. Thank you. Jane, Tampa, Florida, XM Satellite, go. Hi, this is Jane. I live in Tampa. I'm a hospice nurse. I'm 56 years old. I have an autoimmune disease. I've been working all my life. I'm covered by group health insurance now, and I'm trying to hang on until I'm 65 because if I bought private insurance, it would be higher than my mortgage payment. Do you hold on, hold on, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You say you have group health insurance, right? Through my employer who has... Right, right. That's what a lot... So what are you whining about? I'm not whining, sir. What I'm asking you is you had made a statement earlier in the program that I should deplete my resources first. Ma'am, ma'am, you're not even making any sense. You're arguing like you're a victim when you're taking, uh, when you're using your mind and using the system exactly the way that most people would. I'm not you are, well, you are, pay attention, please. You're not the only one with autoimmune disease. I have family, a family member with that too. You work for a group. You have group insurance. You're covered, and you say, I'm hanging on as long as I can till I'm 65. Ma'am, you, is your health your number one issue? Absolutely. Right is your now. health your number what? Just follow along with me. Is it your number one priority? Yes, I have to stay alive. Right, and you're going to do everything you can to stay alive, right? Yes. Like I'm continue, ma'am, pay attention. Ma'am, you're talking over me. You're Let not me finish. Me no, I'm not hearing you out because you're complaining about something that doesn't even apply to you. 
Of course, you have you are you have coverage through group health insurance, and you come on the program and you say, "I'm hanging on as long as I can with my group health insurance." What do you mean you're hanging on as long as you can with your group health Very insurance? You li- lower her down. You live in a magnificent country where you have health insurance, where you can get prescription drugs, where you can get doctors, where you can get serviced, uh, where you can where you can go to hospitals if you need to. That is your number one priority. Nothing else. That's your number one priority. So when you say you're hanging on as long as you can with your group health insurance, well, what else would you do? Well, I'm asking you the question. You had made a statement earlier in the show that I should deplete all my resources. Say I get too sick. See, here here we go with the hypothetical. All right, ma'am. Here here we are with the hypothetical. Let's say you have autoimmune illness and you have a job, and you're covered by group insurance, correct? Yes. And you're well, covered. Thank you that. for your call. You're done. You're covered. And by the way, that's how most people do it. That's how most people do it. They try to find a job where they can get health insurance. Oh, I hate my job. Well, so what? Does that mean the rest of the country has to pick up your coverage? You've got a job, and you've got coverage, and you're whining about it. What else can a country do? What else can an economic system do? Nothing. Nothing. So if we have people who now complain that they have insurance, but they really don't like their job and they don't want to have to work there to have insurance, what are we supposed to do about them? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Producer? She has insurance, and she's complaining, what if she didn't have insurance? Somebody call me who has a pre-existing condition, and don't be one of these Obama drones with your talking points, who's going to pretend. And let's walk through your situation. Let's see if there's a government program to cover you. Let's see what kind of lifestyle you live. Let's walk through it, because my contention is we're dealing with a very small percentage of the population, but we've allowed ourselves to be convinced that this is 1920, that it's 1820, let me put it that way, that there isn't a Medicaid program, that there isn't a Medicare program, that there isn't an S-CHIP program, that we don't have billions of dollars being spent by the private sector to cover people who don't have coverage or can't get drugs. Let us pretend that we live in the real world and not 1820. Because we are being fed nonsense here. That is not to say that there aren't people who are adversely affected. I get that completely. But the vast majority, the overwhelming majority of Americans are covered. And you don't destroy a magnificent health care system like this because like the last lady who called from Tampa saying... She has a job, but she's hanging on as long as she can with the job. She really doesn't want it, so she can get her health care. Well, that's what you do in life. Mr. Producer, as much as you like your job, as much as we get along and everything else, if you didn't have to do this job, would you do the job? You'd still do the job? If you needed the money, right? You work because you need to work, correct? A lot of people work because they need to feed their family. They need to protect them medically. They need to put a roof over their head. In other words, that's what we do. That's what we do. She called and was telling my call screener that she had a pre-existing condition, and we assumed her argument was that she can't get coverage. I was stunned when she said she has coverage, but she's, she really doesn't want to work where she's working. Okay, well, that's not my problem, and it's not your problem, folks. And we shouldn't have to pay the bill for somebody who has coverage or really doesn't want to work there. you agree with me, Mr. Call Screener? I mean, this is crazy. We're getting crazy now. 